Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Stubers. I am the Associate Director of Alumni Engagement for the Grazadio Business School. And today is our inaugural Business Solutions Roundtable. And we thank you so very much for being a part of our uh, uh, exciting session today. And we hope that you find lots of value um, in today's um, event. So at a high level, uh, the way today's event will flow is we will have our business challenge presentation along with uh, initial input from our expert panel. And then the full group will transition into three breakout rooms for um, additional solutions discussion. And then there will be breakout room uh, results presented by the facilitators. And then we will have a final expert panel solution thoughts um, and solutions for our presenter. And then we will do a brief closing that will be conducted by our Dean of Students and Alumni Affairs, Dr. Bernice Ledbetter. I'd like to first introduce our expert panel. Um, first off, we have Melva Benoy. Uh, she is the founder and president of the Marion Dupree Group. We have PGBS alumnus Quincy Newell, uh, who is the founder and CEO of 2114 Media and who is also a Grazadio board member. And we have expert panelist Ross Polak, who is executive vice president and chief human resources officer. Today's breakout room facilitators are from our Master of Science in Organization Development Program, which I am also an alum of. We have Brooks Dara, um, who is the chief executive officer and organizational effectiveness consultant of Samsara Consulting Group. We have Sue Funkhauser, who is the director for the MSOD Program Operations Executive Programs. And we have Daniel Schmidt, who is an organization design consultant with Onfar. I would like to introduce uh, our moderator today, Dr. Nelson Granados, who is associate professor of ISTM and is, who is also the executive director of the Institute for Entertainment, Media, Sports, and Culture at the Grazio Business School. Our business challenger presenter today is current uh, EMBA student, Lexi St. John. Uh, she does graduate this coming December, so she's uh, very close to completing her degree program, and she is the vice president of content and head of global networks at QU Media. At this time, I would like to turn it over to our moderator, Dr. Nelson Granados. Thanks a lot, Jason. Uh, okay, first thing I'd like to say is we have a tight uh, schedule because we're trying to present a business problem and solve it within an hour and a half. Imagine that. Uh, in any case, for those of you who are interested generally on how to break away from the vicious cycles of a new uh, company, a startup, a new venture, uh, or a small company in general, or whether you're interested uh, in the meat entertainment sector uh, industry, where, which is what this case is about. But just general, generally speaking, how to solve a complex problem uh, that has lots of uh, underlying issues and root causes. Uh, oops, sorry, this is this is uh, perfect uh, for you. Uh, I would like to just give it now to Lexi, who's going to do a quick presentation on on uh, QU Media and the problem they're facing and how you can help her uh, and how we can all learn from this case. So let's do it. Thank you, Dr. Granados. Thank you, Jason, and everyone at Pepperdine to make this happen. And thank you to the EMBA students um, and everyone here, you know, part of the EMBA community. I, as an EMBA student about to graduate, I know how valuable feedback is from our peers and our cohort, especially inside or outside the industry. So I really do appreciate you attending and hopefully we can all learn something from this. So I'm gonna share my screen and get this presentation going. I know we've got a tight schedule. All right, so a little bit about Q Media. Um, Q Media um, makes products powered by the world's top digital influencers and creators. Um, we have a very multi-screen approach, uh, content curated for millennials and young Gen Z audiences around the world. And our products include television networks, um, shows and influencer marketing campaigns. So just a brief um, company history we launched in 2014 with an international channel that was a hosted MTV styled channel. Um, we expanded globally uh, with content initiatives in India, Poland, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. And we've built a very successful US 
based influencer marketing program here um, with some of the um, some of the campaigns below in the picture. Um, and so now, you know, our tentpole businesses are really the India television channel and the US based influencer marketing business. And so I'm here to really bring you into the world of the Q India um, and some of our problems associated with that. So the best introduction, I think, is the promo. Um, so here is our little promo. You are the So that's um, our company in a nutshell, really, our, it's a good visual introduction, I think, to the Q India. And as you can see, you know, we, we work with a lot of digital creators and a lot of um, in India. And even though we're, we're a small startup, we've got a lean and mean team, especially over there um, in Mumbai, we're able to do an incredible amount of things with just, you know, just in the first few years of um, you know, our channel. So we launched November 2017, just on one distribution platform Talk to Sky with only six shows. Um, and really, I just quickly wanted to give you a, a market industry um, context of, of why India, you know, why did we decide to really expand there? I mean, the, there's such a huge growing uh, media entertainment industries, particularly in the television sector. Um, but, and, you know, more specifically, there's growing internet penetration at extremely low cost, especially in the mobile uh, area. It's really the cheapest internet in the world at 26 or 29 cents per gigabyte of data. Um, you know, there's a lot of booming in the online video world and we really saw the, the opportunity to take that digital media and merge it with the traditional um, television broadcast world. Um, there's really a white space for opportunity for us, um, not only with just what we were doing and adding value with digital to TV, but in that general space, there really wasn't um, a television network made just for the young audiences in India and what they wanted specifically in such a digital universe. Um, so that's a little bit of context. So a brief history of our first phase of the channel, really the first 12 to 18 months. We um, were really in the development phase, channel development, team maturity, um, you know, and really getting that strategy off the ground. So our main objective um, was really twofold. It was to develop relationships and strategic partnerships with, with top content partners. So identifying the top um, content producers and MCNs and digital creators that we could partner with and really launch our channel and grow together. Um, we expanded distribution and reach on many of the top DTH and OTT and mobile platforms. Um, you know, and, and the way we did that is we have our linear television network that's 24 seven. And then that feed goes to um, live feed goes to the OTT platforms as well as the VOD content for playback. Um, we really were a small operation. We built uh, the local team in Mumbai. It really only started with, with me in LA. I was really the first employee of the Q India. And we had one editor and two researchers um, in Mumbai, but we needed to build the team quickly. And then the main objective, I think, for phase one was getting onto BARC. And BARC is really the Nielsen ratings of India. Um, and we needed a satellite signal for that, and it was very expensive, and it actually took uh, a year longer than anticipated, so that um, was a pretty major setback. Um, some of the hurdles, with, especially with content partners, we were a new channel. 
right? Nobody knew who we were. We had a great idea. We, we knew how valuable we were to them, but they were already monetizing on YouTube. You know, why would they stick their neck out for us and give us their content really on a rev share deal with uh, nothing for us to prove? Um, you know, we had a lot lengthy tech integration for the distribution partners. Um, virtual team management was, was really difficult. I spent a lot of late nights and early mornings on, on the, the phone talking to the team in India. Um, and again, Bark took a year longer than anticipated. So the first year um, to two years of this development was really a setback, but um, I think now we're teed up for um, pretty significant expansion. So current snapshot, even with all of those troubles and those hurdles in the beginning, we were still able to grow to 20 employees. We have 60 shows on the network, if not more right now. Um, we have 750 episodes, including a vast VOD library that's on the OTT platforms. Um, we have on, over 300 content partners that ranges from production companies that have web series that are really well produced to, you know, some guy in Goa who has amazing parkour videos, like three of them that we found and, and we want to put on TV. Um, we, our potential reach is over 500 million and we work with the top distribution partners in the country, including Tata Sky, Airtel, MX Player, um, Airtel Xtream, all of those. So phase two is really, I, I consider that to be 2020 um, because Bark really only started in April. Um, so that was our first insight into our demographics, you know, what our actual reach was, what our audience really looked like. It was very limiting. Um, we were programming in the dark for the first year or two. Um, so that was uh, a significant learning experience for us to get Bark in April. Um, we've grown our sales team with regional heads located around the country. Um, our new programming head started in July. So up until July, I had programmed personally programmed 150 weeks of this network um, that I was glad to have help in India from a programming team uh, in July. Um, our, our goal is to have full team localization by October and to monetize the channel, right? I mean, that's everyone's goal of business is to make money. So we're looking at filling the ad spots. We've got a lot of monetization opportunities actually for with ad spots, brand partnerships, so show sponsorships, influencer marketing especially, and across all of our uh, distribution platforms as well. Um, so the hurdles, um, the BARC ratings we got back started a little bit low, but actually in the last uh, couple of months, they've really started to increase. So just in the last five weeks, actually, our ratings have increased 664%, um, and we're on par, if not beating, some of the biggest channels, including Epic, Bindas, Warner Brothers, and HBO. So we're really in a good spot now. Um, the risk though is that these ratings spike, especially in the last month, could be short-lived because of the new programming. Our audience is skewing very low or young, sorry, from the two to 12 age rather than the 20 to 30 age that we were expecting um, to see. So, and then also COVID and the lockdown period has also given some hesitancy and then some uh, you know, it's, it's slowing down our ad sales process. So, especially with the with the product supply chains, right? It, even if a brand wanted to promote their bottle of shampoo that they've got, you know, there's no bottle of shampoo on the shelf because of COVID and the production supply chain issue. Um, that's really uh, hindering our ad sales efforts. And um, now that there's a conservative ad spend, they're waiting for festival season in November to start. And that's hopefully when we'll see a lot of uh, ad placement and revenue increase. Um, so th there was also a big hurdle, especially now with the transfer of knowledge to the team in India. Um, the team is growing as we have got 20 employees and they'll have to learn what's going on and, um, you know, how, how things work and how our delicate and fragile ecosystem works within the, our network in LA too. So in general, the you know, little triangle on the bottom is really the crux of the situation. It's what I call the triangle of doom for us at the Q India. Um, it's the content ratings and revenue cycle. So without great content, you know, we don't, we can't have good ratings. We can't bring an audience in. Um, and without good ratings, we can't sell ads. And without ads, we can't make revenue. And that revenue we can use to push back right into the content, make it better, have, you know, pay the minimum guarantees we need to get the top talent and influencers on our channel. Um, and then in turn, we'll, we'll also increase ratings. 
Um, so that's that triangle that we need to break that cycle in order to really get to the next stage of our development. So future goals, um, you know, just to give us some context and to see the future, right? We want the Q India to be financially independent from the parent company. That's really important to us to have it self-sustainable. Um, we want to create and produce original programming. Uh, it really is to extend the value chain of our company, right? Like we don't want to just rely on content producers and, and influencers and, and those production houses to make content. We want to work with them, but we also want to be a player in that ring. We want to have more negotiating power in that regard. Um, and it's also very attractive to stakeholders and, and uh, probable investors. Um, another big thing that we want to do is really build our influence marketing business in India. We have a really successful business in the US um, and we want to really mirror that in India and have the team here support them in that effort. And then ultimately, you know, further down the line the goal is to make regional, regional language channels. Right now the Q India is only in Hindi and in India there are, are a ton of different languages, especially the Tamil and Marathi market. Um, they're big uh, television opportunities for us. So top line business channel or challenges again, we really want to break the cycle of the, the triangle of doom, the content ratings and revenue. Um, brand awareness is actually a big challenge for us because if you think about um, really the marketing funnel, we're, we have to do the marketing funnel from the ground up. So it's awareness, interest, evaluation, trial, adoption. We're starting from the adoption phase. Like we're only marketing right now to people who already know the channel, who are already watching the channel and who want to learn more about the shows on the channel. But in order to get, you know, to build our brand in India, we need to reach the people who don't know us yet, who don't want to discover us. We go from the right way through the funnel, not, not trying to go against the current. Um, relationship management is a, also a big problem because as we're, we're still really um, on the lower revenue side, you know, we can't go back and, and pay a lot of these content partners who are on rev share deals. We, some of them are actually maybe one or the two of the, of the beginning um, content partners are actually dropping out. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of incentive for them to stay anymore. And then scaling the operations um, is also really important, especially with the technical infrastructure um, and how to do that, you know, without a lot of resources, but at an effective rate. So also just for some context, as you guys are trying to figure out solutions, um, and different ideas. We've tried a lot of things already. We've tried, um, you know, some insertion rate deals versus the rev share deals. So what that means is rather than splitting ad revenue 50-50, let's say, we give them 20 or $40 per clip or per video that we use from their content on YouTube. That has problems because a lot of the content creators then will say yes to that. It's a lot of money up front for us. And then there's no incentive for them to stay um, after their shows have aired on TV. You know, once they get their money, there's nothing else, there's no other potential for that. So then they, um, it's, their content is more short-lived on the channel. Um, extended brand deals for existing sponsorship on YouTube. So let's say uh, there's a web series already on YouTube that's sponsored by Nissan. You know, we would go to them and, and try to extend that deal that they have with the brand already and bring it to our TV distribution. Um, so really partnering with them and that, that also didn't work. It was a little too early for that because we didn't have ratings at that point. And influencer marketing campaigns bundled with TV. Um, it's a little, you know, using our TV distribution and that 500 million number really to pitch to brands, it's still a little confusing for them. They don't really see the bundled pricing and they don't understand um, the value when, they, when they're just used to having it done on social media. Um, and low cost originals, we've tried that too. Uh, you can see the shows on the top uh, here on the slide, Pranks by Ugly Boston, All Right. Um, we tried that as well and they were uh, well received, but we didn't have Bark and we didn't have enough audience information to know um, which original shows would perform and how they're performing. So trying to go quickly, <laughs> there are constraints and solution criteria for, um, you know, really our business challenges. We have um, complicated navigating of our distribution partners and maintaining our distribution. You know, it's costly. The carriage fees are costly. Um, just play out is expensive. And, um, you know, we can ask them to promote our shows on their landing pages or on their Barker channels. But at the same time, you know, we need to make sure we prove to them that our channel is performing. Um, 
um, broadcast censorship standards and practices. This has given me a lot of headaches over the years. Um, and the, the rules change for the broadcast industry all the time in India. Um, but that's something that we need to abide to. And that's something also that content partners um, sometimes are a little iffy of, you know, if, if there's a if there's a Pepsi logo in the background, we have to blur it, we have to mute all the swear words, and, and they feel like sometimes that degrades from the content, um, you know, standard on YouTube. Um, so that's also a hindrance. Minimum guarantees are expensive. You know, even if we've got talent in our shows who, um, you know, love that they're on TV, it's still costly to have them promote that on social media. Um, and then lastly, the, the, the channel genre must remain Hindi general entertainment channel. Um, we can't change it drastically to music, you know, or film. Um, so oh, let's see, you have about one more minute. Okay, faster. Root causes of key issues, um, you know, funding, everything, all businesses need money. Uh, we need more of it. <laughs> um, lack of ratings for the first two and a half years, we were programming in the dark. Um, it really, the, not having enough bark ratings uh, was a hindrance. Our team localization and knowledge transfer, like I talked about earlier, um, and unique but unusual offering. We had a lot of value to add and a lot of ways to monetize the channel, but not a lot of people really understood that business model yet in India. So today, um, I'm really hoping to find alternative solutions. I know we probably won't be able to solve all of our problems just today, um, but it, it will be helpful since I've been so in the weeds for, for years now and just understanding uh, good outside perspectives of these key issues is something that I'm looking for kind of as our, as our client of the um, business solutions roundtable. So I thank you all for joining um, and I hope you all digested that in some way. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, this is a crash course on Q, Q Media. I'm gonna turn it out to our expert panelists, Melva, Ross and Quincy. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is um, share some insights, uh, insights about how you would go about uh, addressing uh, QU's challenges, uh, considering your experience. And if you can talk a little bit about how you can relate your first, um, your first, you know, guidelines relative to your experience, that'd be great. And if you have any questions for, uh, for Lexi, please go ahead. And uh, three minutes per, per panelist. Sorry, we, we got to go quick because we have to move on to the breakout rooms for solutions. There are some questions in the in the chat. I'll leave them. Uh, let me check and see how we can go about answering them um, in the process. So who wants to start? Melda, Quincy, Ross? I can start. I have no issue with doing that. Thank you, Ross. Sure. Um, we'll try. Hey, Lexi. Um, so my background is I, I ran um, celestial pictures in Asia for uh, for three years, uh, including and opened up the Sony Pictures office in Mumbai. So I have some experience in India. Um, Lionsgate, bringing it forward. Lionsgate has a business in India. It's it's um, our channel's business through Stars is growing pretty rapidly. Um, we're on subscription video on demand in, in, in many of the countries in the region. Um, so, um, you know, India is, with all the, frankly, the challenges right now that countries, that companies are facing in China, I think a lot of multinationals and certainly in the TV and media business are focusing on, on India. And, um, you know, I'm wondering, in, it sounds like, you understand your brand pretty well. Um, you know, I was a little surprised about the the fact that you're targeting a older group uh, than two to twelve, and you ended up with two to twelve. So that's certainly one of one of the questions that I would have uh, for you is how to you know is is that a content issue? Is that a branding issue? Is a marketing issue? But it sounds like uh, one of the challenges that you have is is programming. Um, a lot of channel growth and subscription growth is through hit programming, having that one program, for example, um, you know, at, at, at stars, whether uh, critical programming has, has really driven uh, P Valley, for example, right now is, is one of the programs that's, that's driving subscriber growth. So, um, 
you know, how much are you investing in that? How much are you willing to pull from other, if, if India is your most critical territory, how much are you willing to divert toward either um, building up relationships with specific stars and maybe um, maybe some of this is, is things that you might not want to do, look at selling part of the channel um, to a third party, look at merging with an existing channel, um, and, um, maybe selling part of the channel to one or more key uh, stars in the territory that then would be committed to developing programming for you. But programming drives subscribers. And obviously, you know, you've identified the, the triangle there. S subscribers means more ad revenue, more ad revenue means better pro, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know that. So raising capital right now is, is critical for the business and, and whether it's diverting capital from other areas and, and focusing, whether it's raising capital uh, by spinning off the business and, um, looking as a separate business to to bring in other investors but it's a it's a huge market right now there's a lot of attention and you've you've done very well um, on the rating side and so there's a lot of positive momentum there but i think having a regular supply of must watch programming is really going to make a difference uh, in the business and um, maybe going it alone is is something that um, may not be possible given access to capital and, and investment. And so um, I know for, for somebody that's close to a business, that's hard because you've built it with your own hands. Um, you know the market really well, but at some point, maybe it, you, it's attractive right now, especially given the ratings and um, you can bring in that extra capital that would then, um, you could plow it back into programming and continue to build the ratings and the, uh, audience for the channel without that capital um, it, it sounds like and I think you've acknowledged it it's going to be very difficult to break into the next level those are just initial thoughts uh, all right who wants to go yeah I'll, I'll jump in um, Lexi great presentation or framing as well um, you know my experience is you know I, I have been involved in um, creating the original model for a few streaming services here in the US. I do not have any experience in India. Um, you know, one was at Lionsgate, which turned out to be LOL. Um, I was also chief content officer for a, uh, a, a streaming startup um, that was named Rain that was backed by AT&T until AT&T uh, pivoted. Um, so I've been in that great, you know, potential growth opportunity and then, you know, burning ship uh, scenario and trying to figure that out. Um, and uh, I am now currently, um, you know, planning to launch a uh, ad supported streaming service, um, linear streaming service uh, in 2021. So I'm really kind of walking through just the, the, the planning and modeling right now. Um, so this is very interesting for me. Um, I, I agree with a, a lot of what um, uh, Ross just said. I mean, you know, capital is your, is your, your key issue, it feels like. Um, you know, specifically since you had the issue with not being able to get Bark um, activated, right? That was a, you were an extra year. So I'm assuming you had two years of runway that you planned and modeled for that you didn't have any sort of, um, you know, access or insight to data that would help you with your marketing and your content refinement strategy, right? So that's a challenge. You've, you've lost a lot of time and I'm, I'm assuming capital um, through that, you know, that time period, right? Which could have, been, could have been very useful in positioning you now for taking advantage of the, the growth that you're seeing in your ratings. Um, you know, I find it very interesting that you're, you know, once the BART came on and you've had the, you know, incredible growth, um, you know, that your challenge is still, of course, not being able to leverage that. Um, so, you know, maybe that's something to, to look at. Is there a different way to approach that scenario or that conversation that allows you to use that, you know, that explosive growth to kind of push you um, forward in some way or, or at least fill the gap? Um, I do think that, you know, I, Ross mentioned this as well, um, you know, partnering in a real substantive way, whether it be through, you know, some sort of, you know, kind of equity um, investor or, you um, strategic partnership that really kind of brings resources together might be a really good idea. Uh, and even on the content side, you know, I don't know if there is 
um, an appetite to create, you know, sort of a participant pool that allows you to potentially restructure or create a different incentive for content partners that doesn't involve you having to um, output cash, right, um, uh, up front. Uh, you know, kind of, I, I use the, the title model, right, the idea behind, you know, the artists being participants or being, you know, kind of owners uh, in, uh, especially localized in the, in, in the properties, especially the ones that you mentioned earlier, that were you you're really need to kind of elevate the content and also get different tiers of talent. You know, maybe that's an approach, making them partners rather than, you know, making, making them quote unquote, unquote clients, if you will, right? So that's a, that's, that's, that's a thought, um, you know, content is, is, you know, people say content is king. I, my wife forces me to say content is queen. Um, you know, content drives viewership. Um, you know, your viewership drives, drives rankings and, you know, rankings, you know, you get advertising dollars. So I don't know that there's really a way to break that, but rather, you know, how do you become a little bit more creative in, uh, approaching each of these pieces, in particular your content piece, um, you know, on the operational side, I, I, you know, that's it's that's a the capital raise issue because you burned a lot of capital in the two years, uh, unless the company has the wherewithal to kind of you know give you the ability, given that the bark integration took so long, um, to give you more runway. That's going to be very difficult to 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 um, get, you know to deal with, even if you were to create the kind of partner vested partner relationship model, right? You still have to have operating wherewithal and marketing, um, you know, outside of that influencer relationship. So um, I think there's, you know, probably some ways to deal with it, but you know, I don't think there's any way to get away from uh, the capital discussion at this point. Great, Melva. Okay, um, Lexi, great to meet you. Great presentation. Um, uh, to sort of go in a slightly different direction and to give you my background first, um, I worked in media for most of my career on the market research side. So I've been a part of brands building, repositioning, changing every major media company here um, in North America uh, for a very long time. My experience with India came during my time at Fox and um, I'm familiar with very late nights uh, a couple of years ago, basically trying to figure out how to leverage some of the things that I've built for market research in the U.S. for Fox in the U.S. for uh, our uh, uh, star and the other channels that we had in India and just for figuring out what do we do. Um, the other experience in, in, in international, and this reminds me of a couple of years ago, I had a client in the Philippines um, that had a very similar issue. They were bleeding, they were hemorrhaging money. Um, they were the fifth ranked network um, and they were trying to figure out uh, how do we move forward? Uh, the same challenge with ratings. And once you get outside into another market, very different in terms of how the tools that you have. In the US, you have the ability to sell advertising without ratings and to make money without ratings. And one of the things that I tried to get them to look at because they also had digital, they do have other numbers to sort of figure out metrics to sort of transact against. What's interesting, and we'll go into this further, is your target is youth. So what I'm not sure about while you're talking about your brand is how much you've talked to your audience, how much, you know, if you've done any sort of work around just in market, talking to your audience, what they have to say, et cetera. Uh, it takes me back to the experience with the channel in the Philippines where half of the employees had one view of the channel and the president of the channel had a different view, which was completely a huge problem with brand alignment internally. So first we had to solve for that then we had to look at the content that was available which turned us towards sports in that issue in that market but because we had digital and this massive digital presence i was able to get them to think about there are other numbers to use to sort of get the marketplace to move around and you have something pretty significant pretty um interesting in that it's young targeted it's not traditional so 
I don't know necessarily that I would take the more traditional routes that my colleagues are suggesting because those are the traditional ways to go after this. Um, it takes a while to build a brand, especially with young people. Um, and it takes a while to get to the point to you find the thing to go viral to sort of push you over the top. A hit is a hit is a hit, right? Um, but in this climate, we're having, cha we're having challenges with advertising across all markets. They're advertising very differently. And we're having other challenges with regard to fatigue and what people are willing to watch, right? So I'll stop there because we're on a tight time and uh, hand it back to you, Nelson, so we can keep Great. going. Thank you, so I was just start trying to type in uh, how the breakouts, breakouts are gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna be assigning topics based on each one of our expert uh, experts' uh, background and what they said. So for the breakout number one, uh, which is going to be uh, where Melva is going to be, you're gonna, uh, what I'd like you to try to sway the conversations toward target market and ratings, which is one of your areas of expertise. You may be successful or not, depending on what people are interested there, but it'd be great to have some uh, advice for Lexi on that. For breakup for number two uh, is going to be uh, Ross. Uh, he insisted quite a bit on, on the need for funding and capital, so I'd like breakout two, if you can, Ross, to sway the conversations towards that area. And then for Quincy, what I'd like you to focus on is since your wife says content is queen, you know, uh, try to focus the, uh, the, the, the conversation on content. What kind of content should they be uh, focusing on? So I'll type it in, uh, but let's just go straight to the breakouts and I will see you. Let's see, right now it's 12.07. We're way behind. So I will say uh, 12.35. That gives us about 27 minutes. We'll still be five minutes behind, so we'll have to rush a bit towards the end, but I think uh, 1235, let's all be back in the main room. Okay, great. All right, let's uh, move ahead then. We have, we're gonna have a three minute uh, uh, reporting out from each one of the uh, facilitators. So I would like to start with Sue Funkhauser from breakout room number two uh, with Ross. And the topic, let's find out if they were able to sway the conversation to uh, funding and capital. Okay, so I'm going to call on Robert, actually, because he um, did the themes. And these are things, these are ideas. I hope, Robert, you don't mind me putting you on the spot. These are ideas to further investigate. That's how. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Three minutes, please. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so, I mean, any business, it's tough to have capital and raising capital. So um, having, you know, capital management is going to make or break any organization. So um, for us, we, we kind of put together a um, share with you. We had like a, a little idea for what we thought would be some good ideas to for you to use your capital. And one of them that we thought would be to share production costs with another studio, um, you know, as far as your, your hard costs for that to help better manage your capital. But as far as, um, you know, funding, um, I would, we kind of thought of the idea to use your existing partnerships that you have that are actually working in other regions to see if they would help fund further investment into India. Um, I think that's kind of going to be a good way to um, brand, have those brands branch into the other areas that you want to go to. Um, you know, uh, something that I was confused about at first was uh, if you were actually a traditional television studio or a um, internet entertainment company as well. And that's something um, maybe to consider uh, weighing out the costs of, you know, obviously you're starting up a new um, entertainment company. So uh, with the broadband uh, impact rate into India, I think it's important to try and weigh that out. Um, David, who else was also in, uh, on our group here, uh, works in Philippines and he was talking about how they basically jumped straight into kind of like YouTube style uh, entertainment companies and figuring out which one's actually a cheaper capital cost. But as far as fundraising, I would also look into government funding as well to see if there's any um, government funding to help a foreign entertainment company come in to help uh, build entertainment for them. Um, another one, I think the last one I think that would be worth worthwhile to uh, 
to pursue is find a famous Bollywood actor um, that would want to help invest into this and use it as a uh, basically as a tax write off to them. I think that's kind of a people do that all the time in America. Um, uh, like at, I, I worked at Sony and Steph Curry had his own production company there for film and I don't I've never seen him there once or <laughs> or make a film so <laughs> um, yeah but that's all thank you Robert could you just look at the chat quickly and if I haven't captured everything just add the idea great yes great idea so let's go next with uh, with uh, Brooks in room one and the topic uh, let's find out was uh, target market and uh, ratings. Um, so three minutes, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen as well. Tell me if you can see this. Okay. So um, we were talking about target market and ratings and we started with um, kind of the ideation on the left and all of those came together around launching a robust research tool to really help um, the Q India focus in on the, their audience. And so we had some data, you know, the population in India, for example, and needing to target their audience, you know, with 13 to 30 being the current target, but not the current viewership. So we generated some questions. Those are the two stickies in blue. Um, so what prompted that surge in ratings um, and why? And what is the peak content? What are people gravitating to as far as the content is concerned? Um, and what is the motivation to really log in? So taking a deeper dive into that. And again, who is watching? You know, are they from India? Are they male, female? Knowing their, we know their age, but want to know more about what is driving them to watch. So ultimately, we came around to um, these last couple of ideas to launch a brand tracker um, to really understand how your target audience feels about this brand versus your competitors um, and really try to diagnose the, the, the problem um, as to why you're not reaching your target market through your viewer. Um, and then Melva said, you know, building, building that out of your own assets, um, to, sorry, to extend that idea, um, build a community from, you know, within your own assets to have an ongoing conversation, um, you know, where you can collect some of their views, which is better than shooting in the dark. I think we, a few different people in our group talked about shooting in the dark. So all of this is designed to create more awareness around your target market and who they're actually, or what they're actually attracted to. And then I would ask anybody else in group one, if you have something to add to, to further this. Okay, let's go to, um, let's go to breakout number three with uh, Quincy and then this will be Daniel as a facilitator. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, Quincy, uh, I think you can all see a table on your screen at this point. Quincy got us started off with a good steer, um, reframing or, or adding some depth to content as queen. So the question that the group was trying to solve was, how do we sustain relationships with content providers and also recruit and attack or attract larger value talent to drive the business? So you can see that we generated nine ideas that we thought were pretty good, but we didn't get all the way through the scoring process because 30 minutes uh, moves along quite quickly. Um, where we did manage to start scoring, we, we were organized around items seven and eight. Um, seven is looking at, uh, well actually both seven and eight are um, oriented toward a, a central theme of restructuring, renegotiating, getting creative with incentives to keep talent, to keep key talent, and in some cases this might be key local talent, to stay with the, um, to stay with the platform and defer immediate uh, compensation for 
um, more significant rewards on the um, you know on the downstream side of of the relationship, and we believe that um, that will that will drive longevity and commitment. So with that comment made, I'm going to open it up to the members of Team Three for additional comments. Yeah, and and for the new partners, um, I think one of the teams just mentioned this. You know, like a big Bollywood star. Um, you know, making them a business partner, right, which is, is key, you know, specifically based off of their local celebrity, which will bring value to the brand generally and awareness among the target audience, whatever that target audience would be, and the, that partner would have to be appropriate for that. Um, but also making them from an Optus perspective, you know, however it's structured actually will be determined, but making them a business partner where they are a vested or at least perceived owner in Q India. Um, which then you leverage their celebrity as well as, um, you know, their ability to provide content and or some leverage in the marketplace. Great. All right. Uh, we're going to have the expert panel uh, now take over. But before that, I, there was a question from um, the breakout that uh, was dealing with target market. And I'd like to give a chance to Lexi to respond because she shared that with me. I think it's kind of interesting. So Lexi, if you can, in one minute, share why the ratings went up, um, you know, why people in India are so excited and why you are concerned. Yeah, absolutely. So just to give more context, the last five-ish weeks, we've launched the first of two um, animated shows on, on the network and they're really skewed younger, although they're more like horror and terror kind of animated shows. It was really the first of the kind. Um, and those ratings, uh, or our, our ratings increased at least 70 60 to 70 percent of those increase in ratings came from just those two shows, uh, those animated shows, and that really is skewing our audience to the two to 12 year old age range. Um, and we think, you know, looking at the market behaviors and kind of the psychographics of the segmentation and all of that, um, there's a large amount of co viewership in India. I mean, 98 percent of TV households in India are single TV households, so that means you know, the moms are watching with kids. Um, you know, and I think that a lot of our target audience, which is the 20 to 30 year olds, they are moving to the internet because, you know, they'd rather have the majority of the family, which is young kids and adults or even grandmothers and, and grandfathers or uncles, aunties and uncles, you know, they watch together on the TV while the, while the kids can, or the teenagers can go watch on the OTT platforms on their laptops. Um, so that's kind of where I think we're losing our audience. And um, it is a concern that these ratings will drastically dip if we don't refresh the animated content or if we don't uh, maintain that younger um, animated series type of show that now that our audiences are, are, are expecting to see on the channel. So that's another. Um, great. So great segue to, to the panel to uh, share their final thoughts. And to me as a, uh, you know, as, 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 as an executive, I would think, do I go and chase where I was uh, successful in the short term with these animated videos? Or do I stick to my strategy and then build my content and uh, search for investors uh, around that strategy? So uh, let me just give it up, give it up to ex experts and uh, share their thoughts and, and uh, wisdom. Sure, sure. So, so Lexley, Lexi, I mean, runway is a big issue. I'm assuming, right? Just understanding what the challenge is, right? Having the ability to have time. Um, and the capital to support uh, the operations so that you can figure out and refine your strategy um, on a go forward basis now that you have ratings. Would that be correct? Absolutely accurate. Yes, correct. Okay. So, um, so, you know, capital is key, clearly, right? So, you know, I think the capital strategies that are being put forth are, are things to consider and also, you know, brainstorming around that idea. Um, the second piece seems to be, you know, maintaining the relationship that you have because you have what 300 plus content relationships. Um, you know, you have existing partners, but you also have a challenge getting new, bigger names. So there has to be some thought around number one: how do you maintain the current relationships that give you gives you some level of sustainability over a period of time. Uh, and in addition to that, what kind of value can you bring to the table that's uh, an incentive or unique 
for a larger brand partner um, to become aligned with you um, with respect to you know creating credibility or further credibility in the market, but also open up opening up access to um, you know to viewers, um, whatever you determine ultimately your your target viewership is. And that's you know for me I I kind of break it down to that brass tax you know it's about money um, right now ultimately um, and your ability to sustain over a period of time that allows you uh, the ability to navigate the market a little bit uh, further. I'll go. I'll go next. I it's. Uh, I thought that was extremely well uh, done, Quincy. No surprise, um, and and well thought out. Uh, and I'm I'm on the same page with you in 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 every single one of your recommendations. Um, I I think you know in addition to capital and looking for partners and whether those partners are multinationals or well funded local Indian companies. Uh, whether that involves looking at bring capital to the whole organization or spinning off the India operation, um, whether that involves um, forming partnerships with some superstar producers in India and giving up a piece of the business in order to get content in at a more affordable price and, and therefore conserving, conserving capital. I, I, I think that sometimes partnerships, and I, I would like to believe that is the case in the Stars and Lionsgate partnership, um, which I think has been incredibly successful so far, and we've expanded in over 50 countries. I, I think that if, if you find the right partner, it's not about giving up, it's about one plus one potentially equaling three. And so just in, in our own example, Lionsgate brings, uh, you know, real strong distribution chops and is a content producing company, both on the TV side and the feature side. And Stars is extremely focused on black audiences and, and women, uh, particularly in the US and then globally more broad, but is really good at distributing content. And so partners, um, you know, in I would say in our case has is, is been, a real uh, synergistic exercise uh, with us bringing capital into stars and increasing their production um, budget and them being able to grow the number of subscribers and generate more cash, which then gets poured into, um, you know, producing more content. I realize we're, uh, you know, the scale is obviously much larger, but I would say conceptually it's, it's, it's similar um, but, and, and again, the rest of the pieces, I, I think Quincy handled extremely well. I'd have nothing to add on to that. Great. Thank you. Melba? Yeah. Um, my, my co-panelists are right. Uh, what I would ask is, uh, in the beginning, was the vision to make a youth oriented channel? Yeah. Um, and so you achieved that, but then um, where do you think you went wrong given that they're not necessarily on TV, they're basically moving to other channels? And have you thought about, you know, I understand the animation and single channel, you know, single TV household, multi-generation and household animation usually is the thing that cuts through and then next are soap operas. So I, I get that. But getting to young people, which is what you're thinking was the ad play, had you thought about a multi, multi-platform strategy from Jump? Multi-platform, we mean just not on TV, on other distribution platforms? Yeah. Right, so, so yeah, currently we, our plan, right, was to have the linear channel on TV and cable as, as our home base, but that we are accessible, we have a multi-screen approach, right? So we're on the OTT platforms like MX Player, um, you know, Z5, all of those as a linear channel and as a VOD library um, that's really curated and brand stamp of approval from the team India. Um, and then we're also on the mobile operators as well because we know it's a very um, mobile first uh, market. So the audience on those being the younger audience, are those numbers better? Because the, the, the linear TV business is hard, right? No matter what market you're in, it's just hard right now. And so you have to be in all those places. Right, and, and actually another struggle, um, you know, that we have right now is, is access to data from those uh, additional platforms, like those OTT platforms. We're not getting data 
um, and we're not sure. Yeah, so it is, it's a little tricky. Our audience could look a lot different on those platforms and we just don't know. Um, but right now our focus is Bark just because that's our immediate monetization strategy. Um, but also we're, we're able to monetize on those other platforms with pre and mid roll ads um, as well. So in, in basically in defining the audience, a, a research tool of some sort, whether it's a community launched off your social, whether it's anywhere where you can capture people that like the brand that have given you a check and then stay with them with some sort of tracking over time as to be your guide for how they feel about what you're doing and what you're not doing is critical, I think. I agree. And I think one of our, um, you know, one of our mistakes, if there were, well, I mean, there's probably a lot, but one of the things that we, I think, lost sight of was our audience and we were talking to them especially as we're building, you know, brick by brick distribution, you know, getting everything built and ready, you know, we, we kept on a third party level rather than really looking at our actual consumer. Um, so it's really just, yeah. really, we didn't want to also make assumptions about them too. Um, and we didn't have a lot of, I mean, it was, it was me from Sherman Oaks, you know, in LA programming this channel in India and yeah, I can learn as much as I can, but I'm not the person to be doing that. So the faster we could get operations to India, I think the better will we'll be in the long run. But there is um, there is a way to sort of turn that around. Um, if you think about I want my MTV and the mistake of Quibi, Quibi chose not to talk to the consumer and they built for the advertiser and they made a mistake. Building for the advertiser, while that's your biggest customer, is difficult because we work in a business where the consumer, and, and Quincy and I fight about this in, in He's going to smile when I say this. The consumer is king. See, he's already smiling. The consumer is king in this. In this aha, thing. aha, I told uh, you. Uh, see, yeah. Um, as much as you can bring the viewer into the discussion, as much as you can bring the viewer, whether it's personas, and now with social, um, not the traditional social platforms, because sometimes you're listening to yourself, um, but using that to basically uh, attached to them because the, the the trick will be to get them to endorse the brand and do the heavy lifting for you. So think I want my MTV was a rallying cry by youth, not MTV networks. They're all great points. All right. So uh, we are very close to the finish line. Uh, any last comment that one of the three panel experts uh, would like to share? Otherwise, we will start wrapping it up. Yeah. I, I do have a, a you know, a, just an observation, right? I know that you're talking about what your audience is, and um, you know, but you've been operating for approximately two years, right? Uh, but you've recently had a, a, a growth in your ranking, or your ratings, I should say, um, due to the content that you mentioned. Um, so you're not in a, you're not, you know, in a bad position, you could, seemingly you're in a pretty good position, right? Because that telling that story, 664% growth, you know, that's a great story for advertisers that also, if you can model out, you know, ahead, you know, factoring in COVID, of course, you can tell a pretty decent story, I would imagine. Um, you know, so when I think about that, what I, really think is you need time, right? You need time to sort out what you're doing. You know, Melva's suggestion, I think is important, extremely critical at this point in time to be able to communicate, talk with your consumer, be able to, you know, glean the data and information so that you can refine your strategy as you move forward. Um, so you're in a really good spot. Um, so it feels like if you were, and I think someone mentioned this earlier, maybe, you know, Ross and the team did, um, Going back to your your domestic partners or your other partners in other territories and painting that picture for them, saying, "Look, we have a, a fantastic opportunity here. We've had incredible growth in a very short period of time, beating out these you know these other you know networks or channels that are you know you know important or you know valuable in the in the territory." Our issue, however, is whoever took the time to build in the bark, you know, lost us capital, um, and we need more runway. So can we have contribution or can we have some support from the internal group to help build a little bit more runway for you while you work out the capital issue and while you work out your content strategy and 
you know, kind of building your mechanism to communicate more frequently with your consumer. You know, so I, I, it looks like you're in a decent spot, quite frankly, save for the money. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't make the mistake of chasing, don't make the mistake of, of make sure you know exactly, get the diagnosis right, exactly why yes. you got the bump. Make yeah. sure you know exactly what that is because you hate to make the wrong choice. And television is a long game. It's a very long play. So no matter what anyone tells you, it's a long play. It's a long play and it's about repetition, 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 but it's a very long play. Great. Uh, I think we need to wrap it up. So I would like to uh, really thank our uh, uh, experts for coming in and giving Lexi some advice. Lexi, any final uh, thoughts here before we wrap it up as you're, you're one of the main beneficiaries here in addition to the audience, of course. Well, very grateful for this feedback and I think you guys really hit the nail on the head. Um, and it's given me a lot, especially all to the EMBA students here, um, given us a lot to think about and really good outside perspective about who our audience is and, and really how to uh, give ourselves more runway. So it's, it's reassuring. Um, and I'm happy that I was able to share a third mm -hmm. India story with you guys. So thank you so much. Great. I enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, so thank you also. And I'll pass it on to Jason to wrap it up. Yes, thank you everyone for um, attending today's Business Solutions Roundtable. And thank you for all your amazing input. And I know it's been very helpful to Lexi. And again, thank you to all of our um, panelists and facilitators. At this point, I'd like to turn over to Dr. Dean Benice Ledbetter. For the thank you, Jason, so much. And I will just simply add uh, my thanks to everyone for your participation. Many thanks to our EMBA community this roundtable, this business solutions roundtable came out of a desire to be a resource to business during this unique time in history. We came together and decided we can put together a forum to create business solutions. And so thank you for being part of this inaugural event. We do hope that we can do this again. And what a unique alumni experience this has been as well. We are bringing together MSOD and EMBA alums to work together to find business solutions. This truly is an example of waves helping waves. And so we're so delighted that you could join us. And we hope that everyone took something with them, a new insight, a new way of looking at things, having the uh, opportunity to listen to rich and wonderful experts, but also in the breakout rooms, the alums and current students also bring so much rich and wonderful business experience and business perspective. And so what a great combination to come together today to spend this time thinking through a very unique uh, in some ways and, and at the same time, uh, probably some common challenges that many businesses face. So thank you again, everyone for being here. It's been a thrill to be together. And I think this brings our time together to a conclusion. So we wish you well, and we hope that you will join us again sometime soon in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs>